Ryan, uh, just any details on what yesterday was like deciding that practice uh, was not worth the time yesterday and then also uh, getting back out there today? Yeah, I think um, just speaking for the group, um, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's so much that we're passionate about as players, right? We have such a big audience. We have such a big platform. Um, and in the springtime, listen to these guys' stories um, just from, you know, everybody from different parts of the country, but it seemed like everybody had a story. And so, you know, what we proposed back then was, look, you know, we, we can't change the world, but maybe we can change the city. Maybe we can make an impact on a, a kid's life, you know, who's headed down the wrong direction or, you know, maybe change his interaction with the police officer or that starving family that is looking for their next meal and wondering where it's going to come from. Maybe we can be that light. We can be the city that stands up and, uh, and protects its own. You know, we can change the city. I mean, I, I think the city's got like a hundred and, I don't know, over a hundred murders this year already. I've already seen it on, you know, every single, it seems like every time I get on the news, it's a new murder. And so, you know, where's this coming from? Why, why is this happening? And so I know a lot of guys are passionate about different issues, but we used yesterday, you know, it wasn't some slack off period where we just say, hey, we're going home for the day and that's it. No, I mean, we got here at 7.30 and I left here at four o'clock and we were in meetings the entire time. So, you know, brainstorming ideas. Everybody's passionate about something different. Um, you know, we kind of highlighted the four pillars of, of where we want to allocate our time. And I know that as the season gets going and we get closer to Jacksonville, we're going to have less opportunities to do this, you know, to outline what every Monday is going to look like. Who are we going to help? How can we allocate our resources to, uh, you know, benefit, you know, everybody as much as possible? And so that was what yesterday was about. Mike Chapel. Yeah, Ron, you talked to you guys, you know, you had your discussions in mid-June during the offseason, and here you are again. I guess the level of frustration that you addressed it in June, and I don't want to say it's happening again, it's happening still. Is there a level of frustration when, when will change happen? I mean, I think that, to be honest, right now, I feel like the, the country is just – kind of out, of out of morality. I mean, at this point, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to get on the news. It's tough to see, you know, just to get on social media every single day is exhausting. I mean, imagine if you're working a nine to five and spare time you're getting on social media, you get home and, you know, it, it just, it sucks the life out of you. I mean, you just don't think there's any hope in the world. And, you know, obviously there's evil out there every single place you look. I mean, if, if you look hard enough, there's evil, you know, they'll never eradicate that, but you know, um, you know, I truly believe that, you know, we have something special here. We have a platform that we can, that we can reach out, you know, and help people. And there's going to be people hurting every day. And, you know, there's, the system's never perfect. You could, you could have, you know, it doesn't matter who you elect, you know, this, that, and the other, there's always going to be someone struggling, someone doing this, that. And uh, as Indianapolis, you know, I, I think that we do an incredible job with our community here of making sure that, you know, our presence is known. How can we help? How can we do this and that? There is a family you know, Chris, Frank, everybody, um, that's what I truly believe in. You know, I believe that um, we'll overcome all this, you know, that, that the city will be a better place, you know, w you know when, we're, when we're gone. And that's our goal is that we can set up these, these places now and, and get, you know, Community Mondays to be a thing where, look, you know, they, we're going to take a cop this day, we're going to go to the juvenile detention center, or we're going to go give out food, but we're bringing the police along so that, you know, when, when – when you, when you separate both sides, right, you separate the police, you separate, you know, the fear of the police, you know, when, the, when this, when the separation keeps growing, it's never, it's, you know, it, there's got to be communication in both. You, you're never going to be under understand each side if there's not conversation. And so that's where, you know, my background in, in law enforcement and helping those people, um, I, I feel like that, that's, that's kind of what I bring to this council is that, you know, we can, we can still hear each other out. You know, it's, it's not, both sides aren't perfect. You know, they're, they're, they're equal blame on, on you know, each side, and, and there's certainly been, um, you know, it's been tough to see. You know, I think that there's a level of distrust on both sides, and and as NFL players and as a, you know, member of, our, of, the, of this community of this city, you know, I hate to see that. You know, I want to see this city be the light that every other city can, you know, can go off of, and that's, you know, community working together, you know, so that that one kid who sees the cop go by, he's got a relationship with him. You know, he doesn't just see him as somebody who, you know, might arrest me or might take me to jail or, you know, ruin my life like that. I hate that, you know, I don't want that fear to be there. And I, and I hear his guys' stories, you know, and it's tough to hear knowing that there are good cops out there. And I've had, you know, a lot of cops reach out to me just talking, hey, what can we do? You know, I'd love to be involved because at the end of the day, it makes their job easier if they have connection with the city and, and vice versa. So that's, I know I can't want a little bit of a ramble, but, you know, I just, I really do fear, I don't fear, I, I really believe 
that, uh, you know, we can make a change. And I think we will. Ryan, real quick, no follow up. Your background with law enforcement family, what is it? Yeah, so my dad was a cop for um, 30 years. So I grew up in that lifestyle. Every February, I go to uh, Concerns of Police Survivors Indiana chapter. I go to their, their ball. They have it over in Shelbyville at the casino. Um, and I listen in that room and I hear, <clears throat> you know, the, the families of officers who have been shot in the head, killed in the line of duty, hit by cars, you know, just horrendous things doing their job. Um, and it's hard, man. It is. It's hard to, you know, hear those, those families that, um, you know, never coming home. So it's tough for me. <clears throat> just um, give me a second. <clears throat> you know, it's hard for me uh, to see that happen, you know, and I know that there's good cops out there. That's, that's the thing that um, hurts me, you know, and, and then, then you see, you know, bad apples out there as well that, you know, tarnish, tarnish the name of, of other people. And I hate to see, you know, pain on either side. And that's what, you know, really, I'm happy that there's tough conversations that we have, you know, I mean, the, the, every side hurts a little bit and, um, you know, hopefully we can you know, narrow that gap, you know, and, and make a better community. Thanks, Ryan. Zach Kiefer. Ryan, I could ask this question to every player on the roster, but um, you mentioned your background. What have you learned from the conversations in the spring and, and even yesterday from your teammates that you didn't know before that has maybe opened your eyes? What do you think, the progress you've made or anyone else has made, like you said, closing that gap of people just believing different things. You know, I mean, it, it's hard. Um, you know, we sat there and listened to three, three hours a day, you know, two days in a row of different stories. It seemed like everybody had a story of something, whether it was, they were, you know, targeted for speeding or, you know, whatever it was. And they, you know, they felt uncomfortable and, um, or, you know, they're just, you know, the family's a, a product of, of murder or something, you know, there's, there's a horrendous story that everybody's got, you know, and, um, you know, it's tough for me, because, you know, I know that there's good out there, but I, I just didn't think that there was that kind of evil out there as well. And so that was a learning curve for me. I think everybody, you know, um, was a little bit uncomfortable in that in, the, in those Zoom meetings, man, because you just, you care about your brothers, you care about the guys you play with, and to see them hurt, to see them, um, you know, carry something for so long and then to get it out off their chest and, you know, break down, um, you know, just to barely even get it off. Uh.